The camshafts are removed, so all the valves are closed. Now I'm going to put smoke in the exhaust manifold and see if it comes out of an, in an injector hole. The two end ones are coming out. You see it there? It's coming out of that one on the exhaust side. And it's coming out of that one quite a lot on the exhaust side. The middle two are okay. This one was the one that was okay. Well, going by a relative compression test, it looked like that was okay, but definitely those other two are showing issues. Here's the cylinder head on the exhaust side. You can see I filled them with water to see which valves are leaking. This is the one that had a slight leak. You can see it dripping out of here, drip, drip, drip. This one's got a weep, and so is that. They're both weeping. If I wipe them, they just come back. So slight leaks here. That one's got a weep, which I don't want to see any leaks really. And this one here, both those valves are leaking. Let me get a towel and wipe it. Well, you can see it there. You can see there if I do that. They're both leaking on that one. And what I, I'm putting it down to the carbon buildup. That's all I can think. But it's like Peter Kennedy said. This is the exhaust, not the exhaust on the exhaust manifold side and inlet on the inlet manifold side. It is exhaust, exhaust, exhaust. It goes across it. You line it up with the port. Exhaust. That's why it's only leaking out of these ones. Okay? So, they're the exhaust. So I can do the same on the inlets and check them, but we've definitely got two leaky valves. Those two are bad as well. In fact, they're all worth lapping in again. So I'll do that and see if we get an improvement in the compression. I'm going to check the head's level as well. Probably get it skimmed whilst it's off to do it right, so I don't have to do it twice. This time I've got it turned over, looking at the inlet, filled with water. You can see it's starting to trickle out of here. This was the cylinder that seemed to have the highest amperage when it was on the car. Yeah, it's definitely leaking on that side. So it looks like all the other valves usually get smaller exhaust valves. Looks like the exhaust valves have the dimple in. Inlets are flat. They've all got a dimple. No, these are inlets, sorry. Inlets have the dimple in it because that's in line there. Very strange setup. Using this straight bar, you can see it's level. If I was to put a light through the back, you wouldn't see it. You can check it in a few places and at a few angles. So it's not, it hasn't come off because it's warped, it's overheated or anything like that. It's just the valves, I think, have got so, so gunged up. If it... I started cleaning these up. We can see how much pitted they are though in those two. There's a little bit of pit in which I would expect to see. These are what they look like before I clean them up. So that's why. That's why we don't have compression. The valves have got this same sort of coking up like you get when you see that so-called black death all over the injectors. Well this, this is the same on the valves, on the stems. It's totally stuck on there. There's some there. Here's the two that I cleaned up. I'm going to clean them up and lap them all in there and recheck the compressions. I'll recheck it with water at least first in the ports of the head. I think that's all it is, but that's not good if that's what's going to happen. Maybe some sort of cleaner, maybe some sort of a cleaner for the intake would have worked before it got this bad. Wouldn't work now because it doesn't run. You know a good one of those products that clean it, go through the intake. Some people don't like them because it's going in through an intake through the turbo and all the way through it. Um, I don't know, I've seen it work on some stuff the carbon clean as well which doesn't actually put a liquid in it puts a gas in there it was like um 
hydrogen just mixing the water, separating the water, putting hydrogen in. That's supposed to clean these, but in this case, I can see why it's not I can see why it's not managed to um, seal. It's just really bad, you see. At least the head's not warped. There's no damage to the valves and the valve timing hasn't jammed. It's just gunged up. So I've got some cleaners, EGR cleaner in an aerosol can. I'm going to give it a clean out. Now it's all apart. An engine degreaser. I'm going to wash it all down, clean it out, put it back on, new gaskets, time it up. Using engine parts degreaser, it's actually doing a pretty good job. See this stuff, it's really hard. Like how it goes on the injectors. I just sprayed, I didn't expect it to do so well. Well this one's probably not a good example, but... I haven't even started wiping at it yet. Now that you see it's still hard, but it's certainly doing a good job. Some of them I didn't even wipe, they just cleaned up with the spray, but look at that. That's where your compression's gone, it's all this crap. It's lucky the valves didn't hit any pistons with it being a diesel, they have that much closer. You know, the, the piston goes up higher in the head and the head's flat, it doesn't have those curved balls and stuff. Yeah, that, that's just been open enough, could have caused damage, but luckily we caught it at the right time. Just gotta get these all cleaned up now. That's pretty bad though. Yeah, these are probably the worst that I've seen, but some of them, I just sprayed them and they cleaned, so I thought, we'll see what it's like. But some of them are not that lucky. That explains... Finish cleaning it up. That's the car built up, which you can see it's running now. All I've done is taken the head off, flapped in those valves that we saw leaking. You can see the compression test was low cylinders on three of the cylinders, it looked like. But when I checked it for smoke, it looked like it was two cylinders, and we looked like we had water again that was coming out of the two cylinders. But I lapped all the valves in anyway and cleaned them all up, changed the valves to my oil seal. And yeah, I got on there next running. So whatever it was, I don't think that could have happened during cranking and it not starting. So it did run apparently before I got to it. Now it's had the head off and it's, it's running after I've lapped it in. Now that, those valves didn't get like that from cranking, they only got like that from running the, the engine. It must have gradually got worse. The good news is it does work now. So that proves there was no compression. We found the valves weren't sealing. We seated them in, just using one of those sticks with the super on the end and the lapping in case. That's all done. And now it runs. So I don't get why it didn't work. Another thing I did see that I didn't tell you about was in the pistons on that, in the center of the piston, there's a smaller sort of well sitting in the center. So when the piston's up, it will spray into that. So it's kind of like, almost like a smaller combustion area for the uh, pre-diesel. It will fire that in and then it will start it on the way down and then you get the main injection after that that's like the bigger area that's already burning I think that's the idea of it and they were carboned up I had to pick out chip away at it, the inside of them and I didn't realize how deep they were at first until I got all the crap out and that was on all of the cylinders even the ones that did have a higher compression so Anyway, that's what it was on this. I'm going to go over the waveform again for anybody that's interested because now we know what was wrong. We can look at the waveform that we started with because we know what was wrong with it. So instead of looking at it and guessing what's wrong, we can now look at the waveform and see if it ties in with what we found, the low compression because of the exhaust valves. Here's the waveform that we had the other day at the start of this, zoomed in a little bit. The blue one is the relative compression. That's cylinder 3. On the diesel injector on cylinder 3. 
and there's the same cylinder again, firing again, because it's gone through the cylinders. We know the firing order is 1, 3, 4, 2, so it would be 3, 4, 2, 1, 3, and then 4, 2, 1, 3, 4, 2, and so on. The green one is the exhaust. Now we've got 3 and 2 uh, companion cylinders, but for the moment we're going to look at... We know now that the problem was cylinder 1 was really bad exhaust leak, and cylinder 4 was also leaking, but only on one of the, the valves, or not as bad. So now, because we know what to look at, we're going back to look at this to see if we can see it on here. So we've got 3, so ignore that one for now. 1, 3, 4. So that's 4 is the power stroke. The next one that would be fired in would be 4. And you see we've got the biggest intake here. We're looking at the exhaust, but we've got a big intake pull. Now the intake isn't happening on 4, because that's the power stroke. It can only be one of two things when the piston's going down like it is there. It can only be the power stroke or an intake. The intake is the companion cylinder that we know is over here. So that's cylinder 1. When cylinder 1 that's over here is on the intake, it's the piston's coming down. Because when the piston's coming down, the exhaust valves aren't seated properly and they're leaking, when the piston comes down, we've got the intake on one side with a vacuum that's pulling the exhaust gases into a vacuum here. That's what we can see, and that lines up. The bigger pull, the bigger vacuum here, lines up with when cylinder 1, the companion, companion cylinder, when that's on the intake, and cylinder 1. And they're the ones that we knew were leaking quite bad. The other ones that were leaking but not as bad also has a pull that we can see here. The vacuum goes down. And that's going to be the companion cylinder to four. So it has to be when cylinder... Um, when when the other one's on the intake stroke. So when four's on the... When one's on the intake stroke, we see a slight pull on four. So that's the thing here that we're seeing on this one. The biggest pull lines up with the intake stroke on 1, and the not so big a pull is when the intake pull is on 4. And they're the exhaust valves that were leaking, and it's because intake's valve's going to open and close as it should do, but if the exhaust isn't sealed, it's just going to pass that vacuum right through and suck the exhaust gases through. And we can see it here. Now we know, we know from the smoke test and we know from the water coming through the valves which valves were faulty. They were exhaust and they were on cylinder 1 and 4. And now we can see something on the waveform. We can see a vacuum on the waveform on the exhaust side that's coming all the way through. Because those exhaust valves should be closed. So when the intake valve opens, if the exhaust valves aren't sealed, it's just passing that vacuum right through. And that lines up with what we're seeing here because it's on the downward stroke. It's after the piston's going down. So hopefully that clears that up a bit.